Well, what a year that was. 2025 was huge for construction. We've seen things go up, things come down, and pretty much everything happen in between. It's because thousands of skilled, hardworking people in this industry get up every day to shape our worlds and kind of make it look easy. But it's not. Sometimes things can go wrong. And look, we love talking about what makes this industry great. So it's not that we want to make a big deal out of it, but it's the end of the year and everyone loves a big roundup video. So here are the 10 biggest construction disasters of 2025. First up, you may remember this. It was the dramatic moment in September when a huge sinkhole tore open a street in Bangkok. 40 metres beneath the surface, work was progressing on this, a new extension to the Bangkok Metro's Purple Line. Here's the location of the new Vajira Hospital Station. The problem started when work connecting the tunnel to the station hall ruptured the ceiling, causing the tunnel to collapse. The first clue something was wrong came early in the morning when water was seen welling up on the road. Then, at 7.13am, this happened. A massive 50 meter deep sinkhole opened up, large enough to swallow the Leaning Tower of Pisa. And if that wasn't bad enough, what was the name of that station again? That's right, this is where the sinkhole opened up, and this is Vajara Hospital, home to around 30,000 inpatients and 700,000 outpatients every year. The hospital was immediately evacuated, and fortunately, there were no casualties. Work on the tunnel was paused immediately and is yet to continue. Now, statistically, most of you watching this video are American, but still, a few of you may recognize this. Old Trafford, home to Manchester United, one of the greatest football teams in the world. Or at least they were until their legendary manager retired in 2013, and they've kind of been rubbish ever since. So, like any club would do when their team is underperforming, they decided to build a huge, brand new, multi-million dollar stadium. Britain's most famous football club turned to Britain's most famous architect and the coolest guy you've ever seen in a purple suit, Norman Foster. This is what he came up with, a vast 100,000 seat stadium, sheltered under a huge umbrella capable of harvesting sunlight and rainwater. It was a bold, iconic structure, and it looked like a huge circus tent. It didn't take long for Mancunians, or Britain's notoriously savage press, to notice. Add to that the team's recent performance, and the headlines kind of wrote themselves. In October, just seven months after plans were announced, it was quietly confirmed that the new stadium would still be going ahead, but without the big top. That's it! You people have stood in my way long enough! I'm going to clown college! I don't think any of us expected him to say that. Manchester is nowhere near the Premier League of scrapping overly ambitious projects. For that, we need to head to Saudi Arabia. It's been three years since this country stunned the world by announcing The Line, a 170 km linear city in the desert. Then, faster than you can say unbuildable, a slew of other so-called giga-projects were unveiled, many of them in the country's new region of Neom. Obviously, everyone said it could never be done, to which Saudi Arabia replied, Well, not quite, but kind of. Then, as if that wasn't enough, they even started building it. There was a huge trench in the desert, endless piling rigs, oceans of concrete, and then... Saudi Arabia has asked consulting firms to conduct a strategic review of its plans for building NEOM's development project, The Line. Yeah, 2025 has been a rough year for Neom. According to the Financial Times, work has ground to a halt on almost all Neom projects, and the line is, wait for it, trillions of dollars over budget. One project that apparently retains full backing is Trajina, a ski resort and artificial lake in the desert mountains. It's due to host the 2029 Asian Winter Games, but maybe hold off buying a ticket just yet. In October, with less than four years to go before the opening ceremony, it turned out Neom was still looking for someone to build it. 
you could say that once you're in a hole, you really should stop digging. Which brings us very nicely onto our next project. This is Snowy Hydro, a vast network of hydroelectric power plants in southeast Australia. It's the biggest engineering project ever undertaken in the country and an extraordinary achievement. This is Snowy 2, a successor project designed to connect two of the original reservoirs and create a new power plant. And this is Florence, the tunnel boring machine that got stuck just weeks after it started work. To be fair, things weren't exactly going well before that happened, but that contributed to a cost blowout that saw the budget double to nearly 8 billion US dollars in just six months. The sticky situation was caused by Florence running into unexpectedly soft ground. As Chief Executive Dennis Barnes put it, we just didn't know it was that soft, clearly. But that was back in 2024, so what's been happening since? Well, after a lot of effort, Florence eventually got unstuck and work continued at least for a little bit. Things stopped again in January due to concerns that refuge chambers hadn't been properly maintained. Those are the areas that workers are supposed to take shelter in if the tunnel starts to collapse. Not only that, but in October, a line-by-line -line audit was ordered of the entire project. It's expected to take nine months, and spoiler alert, it's not gonna be cheap. But that pales in comparison with a devastating development over in Ukraine. Earlier this year, we covered the breathtaking news that Chernobyl... 3.6. Not great, not terrible. Yeah, that one, had been struck in a drone attack. The strike happened at 2am on the 14th of February, and the remains of the Russian Dran-2 drone were found in the wreckage. The attack blasted a 6 metre wide hole in the hermetically sealed shelter covering the infamous Reactor 4. What's worse, the blast ignited the shield's cladding, causing a fire to spread internally throughout the roof. A fire which took several weeks to extinguish. So, how worried should we be? Well, it's important to note there's no immediate danger. But that could change if parts, or all, of the aging reactor structure inside began to collapse. Work is underway on designing a patch for the roof, but in the long run, it looks unlikely the shield can never be fully repaired. Listen to me. Earlier this year, Ambassador Kate Wyler returned to our screens in the very fancy embassy building which we featured on the channel. But she's not the only hotshot ambassador in town. This may or may not be the site of the new Chinese embassy in the United Kingdom. Now, had all gone to plan, it would probably be built by now. But this saga has had so many plot twists that even Ambassador Wyler wouldn't be able to keep up. How? What did you do? Well, I don't know if Hal was involved, but this is your Season 2 roundup of The Diplomat, Chinese Embassy Edition. Back in 2021, China wanted to build a new embassy in London, but officials were concerned about a gigantic unmarked basement on the plans. China absolutely promised not to use it for spying, but still, planning permission was denied on security grounds. But then, Britain had an election, and the new government was a lot friendlier to China. Yeah. Oh, friend. So China resubmitted its plans, and the government minister responsible promised to oversee the application personally. Everyone assumed she would greenlight it, but a month before she announced her decision, she resigned over a scandal. After that, Britain's spy chiefs sounded the alarm over Chinese spies recruiting British MPs over LinkedIn, and the embassy once again looked doomed. Until in November, it was leaked that Prime Minister Keir Starmer Six, was expected to approve the build. <sighs> At the time of this video publishing, there's not been any official announcement, and it's unclear if a deadline for a decision has been set. Which could mean that by the time this video comes out, the whole thing could have been approved and built. Or not. Maybe. Who knows. What has the price of fish got to do with Britain's newest nuclear power station? This is Hinkley Point C, a vast new facility capable of churning out 7% of the UK's electricity needs. Only Britain hasn't built anything like it in 30 years and has gotten a little bit rusty. The build's been plagued by labour and material shortages, and disruption caused by Covid and Brexit has sent the bill soaring to £48 billion, making it potentially the most expensive nuclear power plant in history. Plus, there's an even bigger issue. Salmon. In November, a government report discovered the plans for the site included a £700 million acoustic deterrent aimed at protecting local marine life. Once again, the British press had a bit of a field day, especially when the so-called fish disco was only estimated to save one salmon every 12 years. That's a big gulp. Over to Germany now, and with its engineering prowess and von Dirch technique, it's one country that you'd expect to have really good infrastructure, right? Well, 
wrong. The state of Germany's railways crashed onto the scene back in 2024 during the Euros. Not a single train has been on time. But the train won't move. We're hit with our first delay. German efficiency is very disappointing. Germany's rail system has been a mess for a while, but efforts are being made to upgrade it to something at least functional. The flagship project is this, Stuttgart 21. The plan is simple, turn the city's main terminus into a through station and transform it into a regional hub. Needless to say, it's not been as simple as that. One major problem has been the gradient of the tracks in the tunnels. The maximum regulations allow for is 0.25%. But the tunnels in Stuttgart are laid to 1.51%, which means trains could start rolling away from the platform under their own momentum. More recently, problems have emerged with the new signalling system that's designed to phase out old-fashioned lights. Details are light, but a series of risks have emerged and the whole upgrade is stuck on red. And in case you were invited to the grand opening party in 2026, it's unfortunately been cancelled. While Germany might be struggling with engineering, one of America's flagship rail projects is being held up for a very different reason. California high-speed rail has been plagued by delays and cost blowouts since it broke ground back in 2015. It turns out that buying land in one of the most expensive parts of the country costs quite a bit of money. Now, President Trump has never been a fan of this project. He tried to pull funding during his first term, and then in July 2025, he tried again, claiming back over 45 billion US dollars in federal funding. That's being challenged in the courts, and a resolution isn't expected anytime soon. But it's not the only infrastructure project in the US that's been strapped for cash. The record-breaking government shutdown in October played havoc with projects right across the country. The worst hit was New York's Hudson Tunnel Gateway program, easily one of the most critical tunnel schemes in the entire country. $18 billion in federal funding was frozen, and Donald Trump even declared he had terminated the project. Where we go from here is anyone's guess. We couldn't talk about disastrous rail projects without also mentioning that old favourite, Britain's High Speed 2. The country may have invented the railways 200 years ago, but it's not gone very well since. Where to start with HS2? Well, that's partly the problem. The ill-fated line was meant to link London with several destinations in the north of England. So in 2020, construction began in London. Now, a cynic would say that they only started in London because the project was highly unpopular from the start, and the UK government wouldn't have to fully commit to building the entire network and could scrap parts of it if the route ever got too controversial. But of course, that would never happen, although that's literally exactly what happened. Today, HS2 is 335 kilometers shorter, 68 billion pounds more expensive, and no one really knows when it's going to be finished. So what's new? Well, in October, it was announced that a 29km section linking HS2 to the rest of the mainline network was being deprioritized, meaning it won't be finished for another four years. But at this stage, who's even still counting? So there you have it, the 10 biggest construction fails of 2025, and we ran out of time to talk about Akon's new city in Senegal, which was officially scrapped. Now, if you've had enough schadenfreude and want to see some truly impressive mega projects in 26, don't worry, because we've got your back. Make sure you're subscribed to the B1M to keep all this great stuff coming into your feed. Don't forget, guys, that we're inspiring the next generation of builders through our investment into BrickBorrow, a fantastic LEGO subscription service. You can learn more and get started today over at BrickBorrow.com. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed this video and you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, make sure you're subscribed to the B1M.